Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and this is my late March Favor Flop Romance Recommendations. So this is the second half of my March monthly wrap up, which I call my Favor Flops. Um, I let you know which books I think are worth picking up and which ones I found to be, well, duds. So um, this month, I actually was able to read a ton in the early part of the month, and then just like a few books in the later part of the month. So today, I'm only talking about five books, even though I read 15 books in the month of March. Um, the end of March was a little bit hectic. I ended up um, going to, I went to a polycon, then I had to catch up on videos, and then a few other things happened in Romance Landia and I got distracted with like some special projects that I'm, I'm sure I'll talk about on um, on booktube uh, soon. Um, in fact, yeah, probably probably even at the end of this week. So we'll see. Um, so the um, the books that I read in March were mostly toward the beginning of the month instead of toward the end of the month. Um, usually this is a more even split, but yeah, so today I'm only talking about five books, so this is probably going to be a pretty quick video. Um, the first one that I finished was Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. Um, this is book three in the Wallflowers series. Um, this is a super classic romance. This, um, this is one that practically literally everyone loved and recommends and you hear um, talked about uh, a lot um, <laughs> by romance lovers. Um, unfortunately, it did not work for me. Um, and and frankly, Lisa Kleypas in general doesn't doesn't typically work for me. Um, I really want to love her. And every time I pick up one of her books, I think, oh, maybe this is the one. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the one that will show me why everyone loves Lisa Kleypas. Um, and it 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 never is. <laughs> um, this one I picked up because um, Devil's Daughter came out and it occurred to me that I had never read the original. And so I thought, okay, well, I can't buy Devil's Daughter this year because I'm not buying books. Um, but um, I had a Devil in Winter, it had Devil in Winter um, in paperback. And so I, <laughs> but I was luckily able to check it out in ebook from the library because ebooks are easier for me to read. Um, and, um, and, and actually, as it, as it turned out, <laughs> when I started Devil in Winter, it started to sound really, really familiar. And if you've read it, you'll know that it's your kind of typical, um, virgin and reformed rake, kind of, um, ingenue and rake, wallflower and rake, whatever. Um, it's one of a, a, a really common <laughs> um, pairing in historical romance. And so I thought, well, maybe it just sounds familiar because I've read a book, a lot of books like this. Um, but no, as it turned out, I'd, I'd actually read this book. The further I got into it, the more names I started to recognize, the more scenes I started to recognize. I just didn't realize that I had already read it. And I ended up reading the whole thing again, because I wondered, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll like it better the second time. Maybe, maybe this is what will show me <laughs> what everybody likes about Lisa Klebus. Um, and it, it wasn't, um, I found the plot quite hackneyed um, and trite. I, I thought the villains were pretty unconvincing. Um, I didn't, I, the, I, people who object to this book tend to object on, on really the grounds that they don't see the hero as being redeemable because he does something pretty awful early in the series. Um, I actually didn't have a problem with that. I, I, I saw how, how he was horrible and why he was horrible, but it's sort of the, the characters in the book kind of forgive him. And so you're just kind of like, oh, okay. So I guess if they forgive him, I can forgive him. Um, anyway, um, I just found this really underwhelming and um, I don't know uh, if I'm ever going to find <laughs> a Lisa Klebus book that um, explains to me why everyone loves her. Um, I would honestly say just, you know, read Tessa Dare instead. <laughs> That's my opinion. So that one was a flop. Um, the next book is Who's the Boss by Jill Shalvis, and I'm going to hold that one up because this one I have in paperback. Um, this is a 20-year-old um, Harlequin Temptation, so this is um, 
one uh, it, it's not it's not actually it's a pretty it's pretty early in Jill Shawis's career but it's not one of her first books it's I think like number 10 or something I looked it up at some point um and actually I'm, I'm gonna put this down because I don't want to hold it up the entire time but um I ended up reading this book for TBR challenge and also for Buzzwordathon, which happened at the end of this month and that I didn't get very far with I'll tell you about that um it's a poor little rich girl who gets a job when her dad doesn't leave her any money um, the hero is her boss. Um, she is very smart and engaging. He's kind of hot and wealthy, um, she, which sort of made her arc more interesting than his. So my basic problem with this book was that it wasn't so much that I didn't think he deserved her, was just that I didn't think he was as interesting as her. And I kind of don't like that in romance. I kind of prefer when both characters are more or less equally interesting, or at least if one character is more interesting than the other, that there's like some over the top angst or serious redemption arc or some really dramatic plot. Um, and this one completely failed to deliver on that. Um, I often enjoy kind of these older category romances for the like, what the F factor. <laughs> um, and this one, and I'll show you the cover again, because it, it looks like it might be that kind of a book. It's sassy. Um, and she's holding him by his tie. And it just looks really entertaining. Um, but unfortunately, I think really honestly, the cover was the best part of this one. And even though it's available in ebook, and you could get it, um, it's not really something I want I, I would recommend. Um, if you are a Jill Shawis fan, and you want some more um, detail about this one, I actually reviewed this one on my blog cooking up romance, and I'll link the full review down below in case you want to explore that further. The next book was also for Buzzwordathon. This was Threshold, which is book two in the Wyborn and Griffin series by Jordan Hawk. Um, this is a paranormal historical romance series. Um, and this book does not actually contain the primary romantic arc between these two characters, which happens kind of in the in the first book. Um, but um, the relationship is threatened in this one. So if if you want to make sure that you've got some significant romantic content in your romances. Um, this one I think still qualifies as their relationship is still fairly new and there is sort of a, a test, a serious test in this one. Um, this series is really entertaining. Um, I um, There's lots of action and lots of scary monsters and the pacing is really fast. Um, the sec there's a secondary character named Christine who's one of the um, hero's best friends and she's really lovely. Um, and really I just, I at this reading, finishing um, Threshold reminded me how much I enjoy Jordan Hawk and how much I enjoy Wyborn and Griffin. And I am very curious to read further. I actually own book three in this series. And I think my husband actually has the rest of them because he really likes it too. Um, so um, I can definitely read more of this this year. And I definitely plan to. Um, this one was definitely, definitely a fave. Um, and also the only other book that I was able to read for Buzzwordathon, um, the why born and griffin series yeah i know it was a stretch but though that was what i had um and um because then i went off to a polygon and <laughs> didn't have time to read um those were the only two books that i got through for buzzwordathon kind of a disappointment but luckily it happens more than once a year and i can try again next time the fourth book i read in march was american dreamer by adriana herrera um this is a male male romance between a librarian and a food truck owner um there are um a lot of things that i loved about this book um it is a debut so the first thing i'll say up front is that um i thought the pacing was a little odd um, I thought the um, the sort of more intimate scenes were, I, I don't know what about, I don't know what it was about them, but it, the, the intensity of their physical relationship didn't seem to exactly match the intensity of their emotional relationship. Not to say that that's a problem, but when I see an imbalance like that, I want that explored more deeply about the reasons for that. And anyway, um, it, it, that, that's a quibble. It's not, it's not a very, it's not a serious um, criticism. I thought the book was really good and I would definitely recommend it. And I will definitely read the next one, American Fairy Tale, when that comes out. 
Um, but I would say that this book is really full of very intense conflicts. Um, one of the heroes um, is Dominican and he's got a ton of really close family and friends. Um, the other hero is white and he um, is um, estranged from his family um, and there's a plot point surrounding that. Um, but I really loved seeing um, how the relationship developed and how the relationship developed within their um, sort of community within their found family. Um, and I really felt like it was a really refreshing read. Um, the other thing I loved about this was that the way the characters talk, so the characters I think are in their oh, early, either late twenties or early thirties. Um, and they're, they're, you know, you know, New, New, one of them is a, is a New Yorker. He's from, I think the Bronx. Um, and I just, I really appreciated the way that the dialogue was written because it really sounded like how people today talk. And that is really kind of, and it didn't strike me and it doesn't necessarily strike me all the time, but it actually kind of struck me this time that I don't see a lot of that in romance. Like even in contemporaries, I don't see people talking in dialogue the way that the people that I know talk. So that was pretty cool. And I really, um, I really appreciated that. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really curious to see what Adriana Herrera comes up with next. So American Dreamer, definitely a fave. The last book that I managed to read in April was Shadow Dance by Kristen Callahan. Um, this is book four in the Darkest London series. Um, I, um, I have it right here. So I have it in paperback because um, Callahan gave it to me at a polycon, which is so nice. Um, and this is a male female paranormal historical romance. Um, it's sort of a steampunk ish series. Um, the hero is a we're going to call him a shifter um, with a secret. Um, and then the heroine is at what the what the series calls a gym or, or a gym gym. I think it's gym uh, ghost in the ghost in the machine. Uh, she's kind of a um, steampunk cyborg almost. Um, she has a mechanical heart. Um, is her deal. Um, just, that's, this, that's not a spoiler. We've met these characters before um, in earlier books. And so uh, this is, this is like, yeah, like I said, this is book four. So we, we know these characters fairly well already. Um, this book is very intense. It is very, very angsty. The relationship um, is kind of, the, the romantic relationship is a slow burn. Um, but um, it was really, really incredibly satisfying. Um, I, if you watched my um, early March uh, favor flops, um, which I'll link in the cards in case you didn't see that one, um, I <laughs> I loved the previous book, Winter Blaze, which was a marriage in trouble trope. Um, I, I really thought that was a great book. Um, I would have a hard time, I think, well, I think I might still like that one a little bit, a little bit better than this one. Um, but this romantic arc was really satisfying. Um, uh, just, I love a slow burn and I love how they, how their, their relationship took off. Um, I, it, it was just, yeah, that was very satisfying. Um, what I will say about this one is this requires some significant content warnings. And I don't talk a lot about content warnings on my channel. I'm just not, I'm not great at them. Um, but this particular one, first of all, both hero and heroine are sexual assault su survivors. I thought personally that it was handled pretty well. Um, and there are lots of kind of discussions about how they can kind of make things work for each other so that neither one of them is uncomfortable. Um, and I really, really liked that. Um, but uh, if that's something that's likely to be triggering for you, probably um, look up some more in-depth um, details about how that goes. Um, the other thing that I would say is that there is a secondary character in this book um, who he um, he can't envision a happy romantic relationship for himself um, by virtue of internalized homophobia. Um, and I my understanding is that um, that never really changes in any significant way as the series goes on. Um, and that just made me sad <laughs> um, and might be harmful um, for readers who are LGBTQIA plus or, um, or have people like that in their lives that I just, um, and th that just, that part made me um, a little, 
sad and uncomfortable. But, um, but I will say that uh, this does definitely still remain one of my favorite paranormal romance series ever. I just, I think the writing is so good. I think the romantic arcs have been so good between the couples. Um, and it's just a really interesting, interesting world. So I will definitely be continuing with this series. Um, there's like a, three more books in it, and I'm, I'm very excited to, to continue to read those. Um, so real quick, I'm going to talk a little bit about next week because I am going to be in California um, starting today, Wednesday, um, for a week. So um, I have pre-filmed some videos for you guys, and I'm hoping that I'm not actually going to be skipping any. I think I'm not, I don't think I'm going to miss any. Um, the only thing that might not happen is um, Friday's This Week in Romance video. Um, unfortunately, I can't pre-film a new show based on the news of that particular week. Um, so uh, I am going to go ahead and try to ooh, do this live. We'll see how that goes. Um, I I may not may be able to make that work, but um, I am going to try. So uh, stay tuned Friday for possibly a live This Week in Romance. Um, and then also the following weeks This Week in Romance may not come out until Saturday just because I don't get home until like I think midnight on Thursday and I may have to work on Friday. So that is um, the way that this upcoming week is going to go on my channel. Thank you for watching. If you have read any of these books, uh, please let me know if you agreed with my assessments. <laughs> um, and just to quickly recap, um, the ones that I do recommend are Shadow Dance by Kristen Callahan, American Dreamer by Adriana Herrera, and Threshold by Jordan Hawk. Um, those are the three that I read at the end of March that I thought are definitely worth your time. So have a great week. Doubt not. Slay some words. And Lex has your back. Bye.